too is where to, you know, it's like the kid comes into my hockey team last year and gives me a slip. He gave me the slip. Not his parents. Right. You know, which I, you know, I did call his mother and, oh yes, no, we know. That's the way it's always been done. But yeah, so, but I, I think times have changed and, and, and if we can bring for our league, uh, the, you know, the concussion safety program, uh, along with everything else, because we never had it last year. We never right. had it before. And you got the two-man system, which should yeah, so clean you, up a few things. And yeah, and you know, I, I think uh, the game will be a lot quicker. I think it'll be better and safer, I hope. I hope there's no injuries, but you know, hockey, it's a, it's a body contact sport. And it's rough and tough and the toughest sport in the world, really. And it's, it's got to be tough as a coach, especially when you're, when you're dealing with, with kids that are, you know, the size of high school uh, athletes. You know, they're used to 16, 17, 18-year-old, 18-year-old boys. I mean, they're pretty big. Yeah. And, and, and they're playing at a pretty high level. They're basically junior A. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 they, yeah. Triple A, major. Triple A, major. That's right, yeah. junior A. Yeah. So, yeah. so when you're playing at that level, Knowing what, what coaches now know about head injuries and, and the headshot rules and, and all this this stuff coming in, um, it would be so much better from a peace of mind standpoint for a coach to know that there's there's one other thing that they can go by yeah. before they make the call. That it's not just a gut feeling or everything that, that you can subjectively figure out and and is the player telling you the truth? Are you sure there's no headaches? Are you sure? <laughs> like yeah, yes. you gotta. But that's what I mean. The player or the student athlete has to, you know, come. And you gotta notice when you look at the guy, is his eyes like going off to a side or his speech? Yeah. You, there's there's symptoms that you have to look for. How he walks, how he talks, and you know if you have any doubt at all. I just cannot see anybody playing their a player, a student athlete, or a player on the ice or on the field, or not in this coach. But you should be. It, 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 it's it's unacceptable yeah. now. And the, uh, it just seemed to be in the past. It was just oh, yeah, no, it was a good shot, good hit. Okay. Well, no, but you know, I, I remember getting hit uh, when I played junior. Go to the bench and you'd be a little groggy and they'd give you some smelling salts and you yeah. snap it and have a little whiff there and away you went. Yeah. You sure you have to miss a shift? Well, <laughs> you never did. You yeah. just jumped on the ice three shifts later. And if you were lucky, you got through. I guess I was. Well, I, I had one bat when I, I was in the hospital for three days. But uh, I just remember going in the corner. And, and to me, it's, it's that to me, as, as a school trustee, is more frightening. It's, it's the fact that how many athletes are out there playing whatever sport that are walking time bombs and they don't know it. That there are no symptoms. Oh, I, I, that it can just be one little push. It can just be one, one wrong movement. It, 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 I mean, when I when I read the one of the latest reports that said that, uh, you know, that the hit that Passaretti took on the forehead would be easier to recover from than the hit that Crosby took, because Crosby's hit was from the side. Yeah, yeah. Passaretti was from the front. Yeah. and basically the explanation was that. That for whatever reason, that front part doesn't do as much damage as the side-to-side -side jolt. It's like, wow! If, if you've got a vulnerable part of your brain from one hit, it could be just, just an absolute accident. It could be bumping your head on the door coming out of the, the, the dressing room. Merrill Hoagie, uh, NFL player, uh, had to resuscitate him in the. In the Bears locker room, he had a concussion, fallen injury. Like, you know, I, I'm just reading some of the stuff now that, you know, I'm not trying to over dramatize it, but uh, you know, it's all there. It's and, there, and it's been there. And it's just yeah, like and, all and, of a sudden, and, 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 you know, speaking of the NFL, I don't know if you followed uh, after the, the the NFL and the owners settled their strike, the NFL retired players sued the NFL and Rydell. Uh, for um, I don't know how many millions, tens of millions of dollars, because they failed to tell them and protect them about what they knew about concussions when they played football. Like, so there's a huge issue here of, of liability uh, from 
from the NOJHL's point yeah. um, that I'm aware of, you know, I'm bringing this in to deal with, and yeah. hopefully it, it helps lessen that liability from a league's point of view, but also it's good for the players from a safety point of view. Yeah. And from a trustee's point of view, yeah. you, you know, you know all know about liability. Yeah. Three weeks ago, I didn't even know what impact meant. Well, and, and, and so now, yeah. knowing what I know, and, and I'm sure that when I bring it up to the trustees, and, when they're made aware of some of the implications, I don't think there will be a problem in, in us implementing this for the Rainbow Bar. And, and I think it's going to follow suit. It's just going to spread throughout the province and throughout the country because it's the right thing to do. It, it, it yeah, clearly is. It, it, is it, it is the right thing to do, and God help us that if we don't do something like this, and an injury should have been prevented because it wasn't passed by any school board, that somebody actually gets badly injured on a second mm -hmm. concussion. Yeah. And it shouldn't happen. No, it shouldn't. It shouldn't happen. It's a, it's a no, to me, uh, just like when I walked in and presented it to the seven owners in the league, five minutes it was over. You know, and I'm not saying it's going to be five minutes for you, but you know, we're talking about the safety of the kids, really, you know. And, and like I say, it is awareness. It, it's, it's one of these things that, you know, okay, we, we can't fault ourselves for not doing it before because we weren't, weren't really aware of, of the fact that this tool is available. But now that, that we see how, how easy it has been developed, how, how, how simple an assessment this is, and, and it does, and when I say simple, I've looked at the test, I haven't taken it, I'm going to take it, but I've looked at the description and it's challenging. Like that test sounds as if it's going to be challenging to do because it really taxes your visual and your, your memory and, 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 but you can see that because of that challenge, you're using parts of your brain that will be affected if there's an injury and it will show yep. if you don't have all your capacities. And, and that, that to me is, is, is huge. It's, it's um, where, where was that? That was at the was that at the Vienna Vienna conference? You know, there, there's a conference. There was a conference. Vienna, there's one in Switzerland. Oh, I know. Switzerland. We gotta get on this. We gotta get on the conference tour. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it just seems like it's almost as if yeah. these scientists and these these physicians who have been saying this for years are almost saying, "Well, thank goodness you're starting to listen." Well, that's the big thing at the concussion summit they had in London. Now. Not too long ago, you know, uh, was it two years ago? Jeff Bukabu may remember, you know, education, 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 educate. You know, you listen to Eric Lindros talk about it. Uh, you know, you listen to the guys who played the game that we all watched on TV. You know, you football players. It's all there. It's it's not. You know, if we do nothing, we're denying. You know, we're denying. I don't know. It's it's to me. It's a, it's it's pretty simple. Yeah. And, and and when you talk to these star athletes, what they're saying is, it's not that they had to end their career. Their their whole their mood has changed. Their their anxiety levels changed. That the way they they view things now has all been altered because yeah. of these That's right. these series of concussions they yeah. had. And, and and it's all points back to the. Uh, you know the, the the multiple concussions and the the, the accumulated damage that is done, and and so and the thing is too the other thing I think we're missing is these athletes, professional athletes, get insurance if their career is over, and and that's one thing you know for them to have money and be financially looked after. Well, what about the the kid that's playing high school football or playing yeah. hockey in the NOJHL that may not ever have that chance to make millions of dollars, where's he going to be? Yeah. And, you know, that falls on the responsibility of, of us and, you know, so... And when we're looking at numbers, I mean, that's the other thing. A lot of people might think, well, there can't be that many concussions, but, but I think stats are, are saying that anywhere from 10 to 25 percent of the hockey players on a, on a high-level team. Uh, at the elite level, on average, you might have two. Which, if you've got 15 players, 20 so players, say 20, it's, it's well, say 20, 20 players. Like you know, guys in our league, guys will dress 20 players. So 10 percent. 
10, 10 to 25 percent this yeah. year, any given year. And then if you have an abnormal year, according to Dr. Mike, uh, you might be at four or five. Yeah. So, you know, you think about that for a second. Four or five players with a concussion in one year on a junior team, yeah. that will have an effect because what do you do? Like, they're not, I'm sure if the four or five guys are hurt, they're going to be out for a while, you would think, possibly. Yeah, no, it's, 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 you know, yeah. like the stats, like here's one here. It only takes one concussion to increase the chance of a second concussion by three to five times. Yeah. And they say the second will be worse yeah. than the first. And then just keeps on the dominoes, right? And, and I guess that's where my, my fear is that we know that, that if, if we say 10% of the players on the team are going to get a concussion, that means on a high school team, okay, there could be two people that get a concussion. We had two. That we year. know of. We had two last year on our team. That we know of. That I know of, yeah. It's, I it, it's the ones who come up symptom free, you know, after the intermission. And it's like, okay, I really didn't get hit that hard, I'm, I'm fine. Those are the ones that have no symptoms. Without the test, they, they don't seem to have a concussion. And, and yet, how do you now, at least now with the, with the test, you're going to be able to say, we wouldn't have diagnosed you with, with a concussion before. We are now. Yeah. And, and so I think those numbers are going to come up. Significant. Well, that's because I don't think we've ever kept them before. No. Like, you know, so, like this year, we're going to keep the numbers, obviously. Uh, I know um, Ontario Junior League is going to do it. So, we're, it's, it's just like keeping stats on fights yeah. and hooking them. We keep all the stats. And this will be another stat. Hopefully, the numbers are low. And if they're not, um, you know, we'll, 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 we'll address it. Yeah. Deal with it, then, you know. Yeah. And if they are, if they seem to be lower than, than before, then you have to give some credit to the education. That, that is gone. that is so important. Like I, every team in our league is going to get a videotape about concussions. So every player that watches that video, and they'll be mandated to watch the video, and they'll have to s sign it. The coach and general manager is going to have to sign yeah, you it. You got to sign that one with Tessa Banana. Well, I, 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 I think what I would like to do is I'd like to do that one plus another one and combine them both. And then, you know, when you start dealing with somebody, you gotta get copyright stuff. Oh, I mean, I just, just say, here's a link. Yeah. Have a look at it. Well, you know what, most teams, uh, they'll, they'll watch it probably on the bus. Yeah. Or, you know, when they have uh, video sessions. But no, it's, it, so there's a component, and, and I'm even thinking, and I don't know, because I, I became commissioner in August. Um, I would have liked to have gone to, and I still might, I have the time to go to every team, visit every team, and have a little meeting with every team one on one, uh, as a as a team and myself and there and the and the coaches and that, just you know a half an hour just a overview of you know uh, the concussion stuff and the hitting from behind and stuff, just to give them more information because you know the typical attitude of an 18, 19 year old or a 17 year old is ah it's yeah. never going to happen to me. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah, so a commissioner's summit with each team. That's, I like that. Yeah, Just, yeah like let's, that. let's cover it all. Yeah, basically, yeah, be the nice guy and then see what happens. Yeah, lay it all up. But I'm going to try, our league starts next Wednesday. The 7th is our first league game in Sudbury. Yeah, home opener for Sudbury? Sudbury Cup, yeah. And then... Uh, Where they play, you know? That's a tough question. I shouldn't ask you. No. No. You know what? I. It's funny. I, I said it before I came here. I was on the phone with the owners and the Cubs. We were talking. We said, "Are you coming to the game?" I said, "I was because I was bringing the banner." And we talked about his who he was playing against, and here not I am. The, I, not the suit team. No, it would, well, it probably would probably be North Bay or Blind River. Okay. That's right. Too. Make the suit travel. Not on Wednesday. No, not on Wednesday. And then opening seasons. Friday, Saturday, Sunday for everybody. That's good. So you'll be traveling to a lot of games, I guess. I, I want to. to. I, I, I'd like to see, uh, well, I'm not coaching hockey this year, so I got that, I figured, 40, 50 hours a week that I was putting towards hockey, uh, I'm be putting it towards this. You're not coaching a team, you're coaching a league. Well, let's say administering. You're the head coach. Right? I'm the head, yeah, I'm the head coach, cheerleader, bottle washer, the whole bit. Yeah, no. You get all the videos? What's that? Do you get all the videos? Yeah, I, I go on uh, Fast Hockey, and I can see any game, review any game, anytime. Fast Hockey, yeah. It's called Fast Hockey. Special site? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Pay for it, and you can watch. Uh, I got, 
I got six screens uh, in my office uh, at home, and uh, then I. Uh, Are the games streamed? Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Not to the public, but just. Yeah, you can pay for it. Go on there and watch it. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. So you yeah. can watch the junior eight games. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah the, the parents who have kids up here from the south and everywhere, yeah, it's uh, one of the sources of revenue for the league. It's oh, actually not bad. They should promote it. That would be kind well, of that's part of the whole The whole thing is, uh, yeah, so um, I can sit there and type in a code word and then I can watch a game. So I can watch them all. Fast talk. Fast talk. Com. Well, actually, oh. just go on the NOJHL website. And it'll be on. And it'll be on there. You can go to Fast Hockey and you know, watch the game and boom, away you go. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, for, for people who are, are listening to this, the, the entire interview plus video of the interview will be on uh, afterthewhistle.com and you'll have links back to the NOJHL website. And uh, I'm sure if any of the public have any questions that they want to ask, your contact information is on that, email. I, you know what, we're re, we are in the process of redoing uh, the whole website to uh, upgrade the website because I want to put the, uh, I want to have the educational component for what the parents and the, and, and the players can look at for CIS and all that stuff. And so we're redoing the website, I'm not quite sure. That would be good, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm in the phone uh, box, so uh, anybody wants knowing, to. Knowing you, that, that there will be a, a place where people can contact you. Yeah, just. Like there'll be an email link or something. Yeah, there should be something or call Hector or what. I mean, I think I'm in the phone book. I don't even know if I am or not. I don't know. I have to look. Could be so. I don't look in the phone book to see if I'm in it. So. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing is communication. And, and, Absolutely. And, and education, and, and that's what I mean. Like this isn't one of these. I don't believe that you're a commissioner that's going to hide. So. You know, I I <laughs> I'm not going to hide. Of, uh, I'm not afraid of uh, of anything really. But I'll take what comes and deal with it as it as it happens. Is there anything that we've missed? Uh, in almost an hour and a half. Uh, we missed anything Jeez. on the by NOJHL? That, that well, no, we're we're, we're seventeen league. And we're we're looking to expand. You know, not uh, probably up to ten would be an ideal number. Twelve would be the ideal number. But uh, is it affordable entertainment for family? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's uh, some teams are six, seven bucks okay. for an adult. Uh, Seniors get a little bit of a discount. And it's like watching a OHL team play Actually, at a lower level. Yeah, and uh, it's um, I'm looking forward to, to going to some of the arenas like the old Puller, it's a 70-year-old building in, uh, in Sioux, Michigan. And, and there's a lot of history there. And, uh, the, you know, they get 1,700 fans a game. So, you know, it's, it's entertaining. Um, I'll hopefully be able to, it will still be entertaining with play will probably be better this year because of the referees uh, four minute system and everything so it should be good hockey. Mm -hmm. Oh Rob Mazuka, uh, Commissioner of the Northern Ontario Junior Hockey League. Uh, thanks for spending a, a, a significant amount of time this afternoon talking about that. Thank you Bob, we enjoyed it very much. And we'll, uh, I'm sure during the course of the season we'll have you back in. Uh, definitely want to come back a couple times to talk about the you know your your feedback on the uh, concussion safety program and how it's being accepted and and uh, hopefully we'll be able to compare notes between the high school. I hope so. Program. I and truly and hope so. Good, good luck with that. And, uh, yeah. Well, I appreciate you educating me on it. So um, again, I want to thank everyone for listening to CKLU ninety six point seven FM. Uh, this is the Learning Clinic. I'm your host Bob Kerwin, and uh, you've been listening to a special after the whistle session of. Uh, the learning thing. I ask you to uh, 